Hey, what's up? I'm Aaron and welcome to the Shred Spot. This is where I do all of my trials tutorials and today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna give you a little insight into the bike that I've been riding for the past year. This is the Inspired 4Play Pro. Now, one thing to note, actually, it's not the 4Play Team, which is the top end model. I went with the Pro because it was the choice of either getting the Team model, which was this color, or the Pro model, which the only one they had left was bright pink. And uh, yeah, I don't know if that was for me. So I went with blue instead, a little bit less respect, but still totally capable. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. This bike weighs about 10.5 kilos or 23 pounds and came in at about $3,000 to my front door. So I paid full price for this one, nobody hooked me up and so I'm gonna give you the real honest review on this thing of how I felt after riding it for about a year. Now Inspired, all the bikes they make are kind of the gold standard for all the street riding that we do. And one thing that I learned through this process is that they're really a handful of different names mean different things. So for example, the four play is your 24 inch bike and the hex is the 26 inch bike. That kind of confused me when I was first ordering. I kind of just went for whatever was available. I'd heard of the four play before, so I figured that was it. I didn't know if the hex was a different frame material or whatever, but I ended up with four play and I'm happy I did. I always wanted to try riding a 24 inch bike even after a career riding 26 inch trials bikes and riding street trials and all that stuff on a 26, I just wanted to know what the fuss was all about. And here it is. Like I said, this bike and all the inspired bikes are the gold standard of street trials riding. And so when I got this bike, I knew right out of the gate, it was gonna be one of the best. And I was right. This bike right out of the box is super rideable, has everything that you expect it to have. There's no real surprises when you get out onto the bike. It was manualing well, I was able to bunny hop it right away. Everything that I expected to do on it, it did. This spec on this bike is exactly what you think it would be. Honestly, it's not the top end spec, so there's some differences in the wheels specifically, and I think the brakes on the top end model are a little bit different. But overall, the spec on this bike gets the job done. Again, it's super capable. It's able to do all the things that you want to do for street riding on it, including a top cap where you can run the front brake through the steerer tube so you can do bar spins and tail whips and all the other newfangled street things that are happening these days. Another interesting thing on the spec of the bike, the brake levers themselves, if you were to buy the brake levers alone aftermarket, it would be $250. They're a special brake lever that Magura makes that gives you even more leverage on the MT7s, so you have the maximum braking potential on this bike. I didn't think much of it. I just thought every MT7 came with that until I got another pair of MT7s and realized these levers are actually something really special. The frame itself is super strong and super sturdy. It's not flexing a whole lot and that's due to a few different things. Number one are the through axles in the front and the back of the bike where you just put a full axle through there instead of a quick release or a bolt on or anything like that. This thing is locked and loaded in there and you're able to get a lot more sturdiness out of the bike. The additional thing is that the chain stays and the seat stays, the whole back end of the bike is this really beefy, almost squared off tubing. So it's not flexing much at all. This bike is really solid where it counts. Even for an aluminum frame, this thing ain't going anywhere. Now, as I'm listing all the things that I like about this bike, one thing, you know, honestly, I just like the color of this bike. This is a cool looking bike. Inspired's always done a pretty good job when it came to choosing colors of the bikes. And this one really stands out to me as one of the best. I love the satin blue, the finish on it. It's not gloss, it's like more of a matte color too. So it gives the bike just a special feel and a special look to it. Everything on this bike really just, it looks right. It looks how it's supposed to look. The other thing I like about this bike is that the bashing on this bike is custom for what are traditional SRAM cranks. You can actually get these SRAM cranks just about anywhere. They're not special trials cranks or anything like that. It's just Inspired had this custom made bash ring that fits perfectly onto it. I think that's one of the things that's most important when it comes to making a complete bike like this is trying to make it as trials as possible, but also make it where you can do replacements and upgrades or anything you need to do without having to always go to a trial shop every time to get this one-off really specialized and custom part. The fact that I'm basically running downhill cranks on this bike and I can swap them out if I strip them out or anything is pretty special, but we're gonna get to that. All that said, I have been riding this bike for about a year and I do have a couple notes, some thoughts that have popped up over the past year of riding it. And the first thing is actually part of the setup. 
When this bike first arrived at my house, the front brake wasn't threaded through the steer. I had to do that all by myself. And to do that, I actually had to unclamp the hose with the hydraulic fluid still in it and carefully thread it through that steer and then put it back together and hope that there weren't any air bubbles in my line. That was maybe the most nerve wracking day of my life just trying to get it to stay in one piece without messing up the front brakes. I absolutely hate bleeding brakes and having to take the brake apart and then put it back together was absolutely terrifying. The, the last thing I wanna do is put a bike together and then not be able to ride it because I messed up the front brake. So I know there's not a whole lot you can do about that unless you get it custom built by Tardy Bikes or something like that, but that part was nerve wracking. Next, and this is specific for the Foreplay Pro model, but the handlebars that come stock on this bike are almost flat. Like this is not a trials handlebar. You wouldn't actually see any pro riding this handlebar. And I'm not really sure why they spec it. If you ask me, the most important piece on a trials bike is the bar and stem combo. And so to mess that up and to put essentially like the same rise that I would have on a commuter bike on this trials bike was a huge miss. I ended up replacing my handlebars with the Deity high side bars, which have the same rise and sweep as the traditional top end inspired arcade bars that everyone else uses. If you're gonna spend $3,000 on a bike, at least the one piece that I would want to have right is the bar. That's the one part that makes the whole bike kind of come alive. And I've seen this on a handful of other complete bikes that I've gotten where they've missed a crucial element. And I think the crucial element that they missed for the 4Play Pro was the handlebar. The next thing that happened in my year long journey with this bike, I ended up stripping out one of the cranks. And what happened on this bike was the pedals kept coming loose in the cranks on a pretty regular basis. And I have to constantly tighten them. And on one ride, I missed tightening it all the way. And I ended up stripping out all the threads in the crank and the pedal came out. And no big deal. This stuff happens from time to time on any bike. It doesn't, it's not entirely inspired fault or anything like that, but one design flaw of these cranks in particular is that they're impossible to get off. And it's not a trials thing, it's these cranks in general. A lot of people on forums all over the internet are struggling to get these off their bikes. I actually had my wife helping me at home to try to like get them off and it didn't come off. I ended up going to a bike shop and it was three full size people just wrenching down with like all the different things in the world we could do to get this thing off and finally made a large pop and the bolt finally came free. I'm not exactly sure how to fix that, but it's some kind of design flaw that's not just my specific set of cranks that happened, but happens to all kinds of people that have these ones. So buyer beware on these cranks. They're gonna be with you for a long time. Make sure to keep your pedals tight. The final note that I have on this bike is, I guess more for myself, and it's the expectations that I had going into riding 24. Allie Clarkson mentioned this in an Instagram not too long ago of, starting to ride 24s and realizing that it's not necessarily the bike, but the rider that makes the big difference. If you can't bar spin on a 26 inch bike, 24 isn't gonna help you out. If you can't do front wheel moves on a 26, it's not gonna get that much easier on a 24 either. And I guess like I had my entire career on a 26 inch bike, which I did ride a lot of street. And I thought that this bike would be making everything easier and it didn't do that. It's a great bike, it gets the job done but it's not the same as a 26. So for me, I think the next bike that I get, the next Inspired or the next street bike that I ride will definitely be a Hex. It'll be a 26 inch street bike that's a lot closer to the geometry and style that I grew up riding. I thought that riding a 24 was gonna be more nimble and easier to ride and, and help me advance way beyond where I came from as a 26 inch rider. And that just didn't really happen. It's a great and capable bike and it gets the job done and it's awesome for everyone and highly recommend riding a 24. But if you grew up riding 26 like me and you're used to bunny hopping a 26 and all that, this actually isn't any easier than riding the 26. It doesn't make anything easier in my experience than riding my 26s. So I think I'm gonna go back to 26 because I'm comfortable with that wheel size. I know what it can do. It's The wheelbase feels better to me. The, it's just a bit more room for me to move around and do my thing. And 
Uh, although the 24 has been a great experience, I definitely think my next bike will probably be an inspired hex if I had to guess. I've laid everything out here and truthfully, I'm really happy that I spent the last year trying to ride a 24 inch bike. I'm definitely not getting rid of this bike anytime soon. It's been a great experience. We've made all kinds of great tutorials on it. We've got a chance to really ride and progress on it. It's been good. I'm glad I got a chance to try it and get this perspective and experience with the Inspired 4 Play. Now, if you wanna see the first time I ever rode this bike, there's a video right here of my first ride. And if you're new to trials and really getting into stuff, here's a great playlist that has a bunch of tutorials that will help you get started.